Hello and welcome to today's video. So, uh, last video, I don't know if you saw it, we wired a, a temp sensor into the car and today we're going to be putting in a, a wideband sensor. So why is a wideband sensor important? Well, a wideband sensor tells you your AFRs, which is air fuel ratio. Um, it's also a good indication of how your car is, uh, whether it's leaning out, i.e. not enough fuel or it's too rich, uh, too much fuel. Um, the car's on the stock calibration at the moment, but it's just ideal, you know, even with one of these, if you're doing quite a lot of racing, just to see what your car's doing, uh, if your tune's okay, that type of thing. So that's what we're going to be doing today, so I'll run you through it step by step, and I hope it helps. Yeah, so this is the AEM wideband sensor, so in the box you get from them and you can get this from XO Racing so if you've seen my last video we are now sponsored by XO Racing so if you do want one of these then you know go and show them some love it's the uh, X-Series gauge obviously you get your Y-band there uh, what else do we get in the box obviously you get your harness there as well so we'll have a look in the instructions just see you know which wires go to where and what else do we get I think you get a bit of hardware over here as well, yes, yeah, so you get a couple of connections, we're not going to use them, we're going to solder it, and also you get a plug for um, your exhaust as well. Didn't know you got that, because I could have given it to the guy that did my exhaust the first time. Um, also what you'll need as well, if you've got a K-Pro, is you'll need this, because this is where, where you wire it into your ECU, it's basically you plug this in, um, and I'll show you that, how you do that, and then this is for your analog basically so you connect one of these wires to I think it's a white one but again we'll read the instructions and I'll show you yeah so I forgot to mention so the car that I'll be installing this wideband on is my um, 99 Honda Civic EJ9 uh, which is k-swapped so this is the ECU uh, the K-Pro uh, V4 I think it is yeah V4 um, if you was just to run a wideband on a stock car you wouldn't obviously take the ECU out you just have to get that extra bung welded up onto your exhaust plug that in and then you wouldn't have um, the analog go into the ECU you just obviously tape that up and you just uh, get your obviously your readings from the sensor the only reason why we're sending um, the analog signal to the ECU is so that we can get the data and obviously when we're using it on the drag we can one uh, data log what's happening with the AFRs and then you've obviously got the digital digital display on this part here as well so there you have it that's your uh, your cables connected to the the Honda and then I've just thread the cables through the side so we don't have to mess about cutting any holes through here they can just go through there and then whichever cables um, I don't use obviously tape them up and we'll probably just use might use a white one um, on there just for reference or I could use a red one which is zero don't matter but we'll pick it up when we uh, go into the uh, K manager software so what I've done just off camera is just taped each end up and then taped them all together we're just going to keep the red wire loose because this will be the one that will be using to um, get the information from the Y band and then that will talk to the ECU but obviously we've got to go into the K manager and sort that out but I'll show you that when we get to it. So now we can put this in the dash and start uh, routing some of these wires, obviously find out in the instructions where we need to go, but let's crack on with it. Just reading through the instructions, looks fairly simple. So we've got the red, um, where's the wires? Let me show you the wires. So on here, we've got the red, which is a switch live. I've already worked out where switch live is on there, so that's cool, so we know what to do with that. Then we've got the black, which is a ground, so we've got a ground already. Again, I'll show you on here where I'm getting them from. And then we've only got one more wire, which is, uh, that's the analog plus. So that's a, I think that's a Vi volt that goes to your ECU. So the only three wires that we'll be using, the rest, is a um, for like AEM stuff so we can tape them up forget about them and we've got these three wires here what I'm gonna do is remove this fascia so there's two screws underneath here that hold it in 
so I've got them out already. They're on here. There you go. Just the. Come on. It's not going to focus, but two Phillips anyway. They're there and there again. And then this should literally should be able to pop it out. There you go. And then this is a fascia that I made on my last video. Go check it out. So I've got the actual uh, sensor, or the gauge there on the back. Two screw type nuts like captive. I must say captive, but that's not the right word. Uh, unscrew these and then I can place it in there like so and then using these clamp it on the back but again got like 200 things to do and only one set of hands so I'll just do that off camera I've got it clamped into place now so the first lot of wiring which I showed you then bits there you've got like a little connector that connects onto the top Top one, so put that in. There you go. In. Then what we need to then do is the three wires we're going to use. So remembering that the white is going to the ECU, so we need to make sure that's longer. The red and the black are going to go to these wires here. So what we need to do is shorten this loom, but make sure that the white wire would keep that and that is going to be longer because the ECU is down here and that's where it's got to go to from there all the way down there. So if you are working on a 99 Honda, what I've done, uh, you can probably see it better on my, um, my last video, but this here is the uh, LED um, light clock. So what I actually did was unplugged it, I mean I can still plug it back in but I found which was the switch live, which happens to be this yellow wire here. So I've got two wires coming from this oil temp sensor, but the red wire goes to that. So that's wired up. Now what we're going to, I mean, it looks a little bit unneat, but I will solder these and tidy it up. I uh, just want to show you what I've done. And then the black cable off, uh, where is it again? Off this is the earth. So again, just literally twisting them around, but again, I will be soldering these. Um, I'm going to stick a bit of uh, electrician's tape on them, um, and then obviously put the battery on because the battery's disconnected. Don't forget to do that before you start messing about with wiring. Should be common sense, but obviously, you know, if you're not um, not used to doing it, then you never know. But anyway, let's. Um, so basically, yeah, just going to cover these up with a bit of tape. Um, I'm going to plug the wideband sensor into into here as well and then yeah we'll see what we get we don't have to have the ECU plugged in either I just want to make sure that it lights up first before I do anything else so I've got the sensor and the plug so I can plug this back in that sorry plug it into the back of the gauge um, if you can see probably won't because it's wiring there you go so that's in there then what I'll do is I'll get all this harness, feed it through down here, and then it'll go where the shifter cables are. Don't know if you can see in the back down there. Um, where's my hand? If you can see my hand, that's where it'll go through the floor. And then we'll screw the sensor into the exhaust, take that cap off, and then screw it into the exhaust. That'll get the reading from the exhaust. And if you haven't noticed as well, I actually shortened uh, the harness for the um, for the power. Shortened that, uh, taped these wires off the ones that we aren't using. And then there's a long white wire which comes down here, and that's going to be, you know, our input to the ECU. So that's going to go down there, the ECU, and all the wiring's there. Right, so I've got the stock uh, lambda sensor out. And there you go, so the plan is now, I'll go back into the car, pull that through, and then we're going to drop the new lander sensor down, and then that will go into there like so, and hopefully all is well. And there you have it, the new lander sensor's in, and that goes straight up into the, the cockpit. So now we've pushed, oh I've got the new O2 sensor, sorry not the O2 sensor but the lander sensor in. 
this harness that went to the back of the gauge up there this will plug into the new lam lander sensor which is this plug here again I really need better lighting in here but anyway you get the gist so that goes to that and then the uh, existing primary we can get rid of that we don't need that anymore so we're gonna turn that off and I'll show you what we do in the settings and then the original wherever it's gone the connector block I'll hide that and then that's the wire that goes to the ECU here is the moment of truth will it work we're getting something Right, I was worried a little bit that uh, it won't work in, but anyway, so I've literally just turned it on, um, let it idle for a, a minute and turned it off, and obviously it is working, so I just thought I'd film that. So yeah, happy happy as Larry. So what we'll probably do now is uh, wire it to the ECU and uh, get that finished off. Here we go, so we've got the red wire which is analog zero and then we've got the white wire which goes to the AM uh, wideband uh, gauge so what we're going to do now is just going to load up um, the K manager uh, also connect the battery rubber so connect the battery load up the software and then we'll get set in the, um, the analog right so I've loaded up the, the K manager I've got our map so what you need to do is go to your analog inputs up here so it's under parameters so this is analog zero that's the red wire that I was using so what you need to do is come down here select the Y band that you're using and that's the one that we're using call it whatever you want to call it but I'm going to call mine Y band so don't mess about with any of this then make sure you save it so that's saved now so once you've uh, set that then you need to go to the closed loop and what we're doing now we're using an external wideband so we're not using secondary or anything like that so just make sure that's selected which it is then we can save that and then upload it onto the ECU It'll update it, saves the calibration, and then now this the Y band will be talking to the ECU. So if we go on to display, that's saying 19.14, <laughs> that's saying 16, so might need changing ever so slightly. But I'll start her up and see what happens. Well, there goes nothing. Slightly different ones, slightly different reading, not sure why it's doing that, maybe it'll sort itself out. Awesome, so got them both reading exactly the same. Now, what I didn't notice was, and I'll show you, so in the instructions, it tells you here, I don't know if you can see it, if it zooms in. So you've got a brown uh, sensor that goes to the ground, to the ECU. I didn't think you had to do that. So what I've done is, if I can turn my... There you 
you get exposure down. So I basically grounded the brown wire on the back of the gauge to the ECU. And everything seems to be bang on. So there's actually two wires that you need to put to the ECU. So that's your white. Um, that obviously goes to your analog plus and then the brown that goes to the earth on the ECU um, so yeah absolutely buzzing um, that it's all right and I managed to troubleshoot it myself so this is going to be in a how-to basically I've done it I can do it you can do it that type of thing I'll turn the car off and then I'll finish the video that's better you can probably hear me now so yeah that's it oh let me change my exposure what a tool that is. I didn't realise that messing about your exposure, yeah, helps the video. So, there you go. But yeah, it's, what time is it now? Half past eight. It's took me probably about three quarters of an hour to troubleshoot why it was doing what it was doing. But, yeah, these things are sent to test us, but we've learned something new. Um, and I hope it helps you as well. That's the whole aim of it. It's to obviously go through the whole process myself, share the information, and uh, hopefully you don't have to go through all the pain that I've just been through. But uh, anyway, I hope you really enjoy this video. Uh, I've got loads more content. I've got some new parts that I mentioned in the last video. Uh, they're getting installed. So I've um, got some bucket seats. I've got a steering wheel. got a boss, all that type of things. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned, keep watching, um, if you don't mind giving us a like, um, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!